In a message that was posted on YouTube and sent to me via Facebook, John MacArthur states that the rapture of the church prior to a seven-year tribulation period is implicit, not explicit. How can the most fundamental doctrine of the most popular prophetic view of the end times not have an explicit passage to teach it? My name is Gary DeMar and I'm president of American Vision. And as you know, prophecy is always in the news. And uh, there are many popular prophecy um, uh, preachers today and authors that are teaching an end time view called dispensational premillennialism. That particular view teaches that the church, prior to a seven year tribulation period, will be raptured, that is taken off the earth. And then what will ensue is a period of about three and a half years of peace, with three and a half years of literal hell as the Antichrist reigns. In this particular view, the temple is going to be rebuilt, Antichrist is going to arise, he'll make a covenant with the Jews, and then in the middle of the seven year period, he will then break that covenant, and then there'll be great persecution, not only against the Jews, where two thirds of them who live in the land of Israel will be destroyed, but there'll be untold billions destroyed around the world. Now, this is a very popular view. And one of the reasons it's popular among Christians is, of course, they're going to be raptured out before any of this takes place. Well, John MacArthur is a very popular uh, prophecy teacher. And this isn't to slam John MacArthur personally. I, he's a, on many, many topics, I think he does a great job. But I think on Bible prophecy, he's off the mark. And it really comes through in this particular a YouTube video. Actually, it's just a picture of John MacArthur and you just get the audio of it. it it's obvious that it was a, a sermon that was, that was preached. I think it begins to show how he really doesn't have a particular verse that teaches the pre-tribulational rapture. He even states that. He says it's implicit, not explicit. That is, you've got to find the doctrine of the rapture in other places. And even in those places, the rapture doctrine, that is the church being taken off the earth, isn't really there. You have to read into the text a, a rapture in order to make it work. Now, John MacArthur starts off by going to Luke chapter 21, uh, beginning with verse 29. Uh, this is the famous Olivet Discourse, and it occurs in Matthew chapter 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13. But he goes to Luke's passage, and he begins with verse 29. It says, And Jesus told them a parable, Behold the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they put forth their leaves, uh, you see it and know for yourselves that the summer is now near. Even so, you too, when you see these things happening, recognize that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Now, MacArthur makes the point that th there is no rapture here. Uh, he, he's, he sees this as the generation that follows the rapture, which would be the generation uh, that sees the Antichrist rise and so forth. So where does he get the rapture? Well, he goes to the book of Revelation. He specifically goes to Revelation chapter 1, 2, and 3. And here I've taken a couple of notes down as to what he says. Uh, he says, the church occurs 19 times. It's heavy on the church in chapters 1, 2, and 3. The churches are being addressed in chapters 2 and 3. All that happens after chapter 3, there's no reference to the church. One could conclude, he says, that the church doesn't appear to be here. Uh, add to that, in chapters uh, 4 through 5, uh, you go to heaven. Uh, now, he, he is equivocating on the word church. He's giving one meaning of the word church in uh, in. In, uh, in th throughout the, the, the book of Revelation, when it actually is, has multiple meanings. I'll give you an example. If you go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 20, it says, As for the mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. See, there's no no mention of the word church. It isn't the church, it's the church as it relates to the book of Revelation, in particular relates to the seven churches. In fact, um, uh, Tim LaHaye writes, he says, there are 16 references to the church in Revelation 1 through 3, very much like what John MacArthur says. 
whereas chapters 6 through 18, which cover the tribulation, do not mention the church once. The natural conclusion drawn from this is that the church that was so prominent during its 2,000 year history, uh, as predicted in chapters 2 through 3, is not mentioned in chapters 4 through 18, because those chapters describe the tribulation which the church does not endure. But as I mentioned, there is no word church, the church. It's the church in Thyatira. It's the church in Smyrna. It's the church in Ephesus. It's the church in Thyatira, the church in Sardis, the church in Philadelphia, the church in Laodicea. It's not the church generally. It's these particular seven churches that are discussed in chapter, beginning with verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 20, and then moving into chapters 2 and 3. It doesn't say the church uh, in, 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 in general. And then there's a further problem with this. If you go to a number of, 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 of epistles of, of the Apostle Paul and even of John, the word church doesn't appear at all. So are we to say because the word church is absent in those particular epistles, therefore Paul isn't addressing the church or the church isn't there? That's a very poor way to do exegesis. John MacArthur and Tim LaHaye and others who, who teach this particular view who say that the church is heavy in chapters 1, 2, and 3 of Revelation are really misleading their, their listeners uh, because the, the church is not there. It's these particular seven churches. These particular seven churches are in Asia Minor. Uh, the book of Revelation isn't addressed to the church all around the world at some period at the end of history. The book of Revelation was written to those particular seven churches in that particular period of time. Uh, this, this idea that somehow the church disappears uh, off, the, off the earth after chapter 3 is, just, is reading into the text what is not there. And that's exactly what John MacArthur and Tim LaHaye and others do. Now, so what would John MacArthur's answer to this be? I really don't know. Um, I, I would like to see a, a true response to this, this type of argument. Where is the church, the universal church, the church on the earth, found in Revelation chapter 1, verse 20, and then chapters 2 and 3, when those particular churches are the only ones described as being the church, the church is in. You'll find the same thing in the book of Corinthians. It's the church in Corinth. Uh, it's not talking about the church everywhere in the, in, in the world at that particular time. Uh, this is the major flaw with dispensa dispensational premillennialism. There is no explicit text that teaches that the church will be taken off the earth prior to a seven-year tribulation period. And what's interesting is that uh, uh, John MacArthur, Tim LaHaye, and others see a seven-year tribulation period in the book of Revelation. Here's the problem. The phrase seven years never appears in the book of Revelation. You will find three and a half years in various ways uh, in the book of Revelation. And that three and a half year period, uh, you can see it in five different ways. Uh, it appears five different times in this, these three and a half year periods. Do you add them all together and get probably 17 and a half years? Which, which three and a half years goes with the other three and a half years in order to make seven years? Now, uh, this, this is huge, huge problems for, uh, for all of this. Tim LaHaye comes along and says that those seven churches in Asia Minor are actually seven periods of time throughout history, and the Laodicean church is the last age. Uh, th that's impossible as well. And this is from somebody who, in who says he interprets the Bible literally. There were seven churches in Asia Minor at that particular time. The book of Revelation was written to those seven churches. The book of Revelation wasn't written uh, to the church at large around the entire world. The book of Revelation was describing events that were going to happen during that particular period of time when those seven churches existed. Now that's why the book of Revelation begins in the very first chapter, the very first verse, saying that these things must shortly take place. And why is this the, the case? Verse 3 tells us, for the time is near. And then you go to Revelation chapter 22 verse 10, and you're told in Revelation chapter 22 verse 10 that the time is near again. So the events in the book of Revelation aren't des describing events over a period of 2,000 years. Uh, and, and leaving us with this last Laodicean period, the book of Revelation was written to seven churches at that particular period of time, events that were to happen shortly because the time was near. 
You'll also find in the book of Revelation mention of the saints. The saints occurs over and over and over and over again. And that phrase saints is found again in the epistles. Who are saints? They are believers in Jesus Christ. Who are believers in Jesus Christ? They are members of the church. And so the book of Revelation was written to a particular period of time to seven churches. Uh, let's not try to read into Scripture something that isn't there. If this is the best verse that dispensationalists, best argument that dispensationalists can come up to in order to, to uh, prove the rapture, they are in deep, deep trouble. Uh, because there is no, as John MacArthur says, explicit passage in the New Testament that states that the church will be taken off the earth prior to a seven-year tribulation period.